at a certain point, Walls you know, sort of started spewing nonsense about what a wonderful job Kamala Harris had done, and, uh, and J.D. drops the hammer on him. If you notice, what Governor Waltz just did is he said, first of all, Donald Trump has to listen to the experts. And then when he acknowledged that the experts screwed up, he said, well, Donald Trump didn't do nearly as, as good of a job as the statistics show that No, that's a gross generalization. He did. So what Tim Waltz is doing, and I, and I honestly, Tim, I, I think you got a tough job here because you've got to play whack-a-mole. You've got to pretend that Donald Trump didn't deliver rising take-home pay, which, of course, he did. You've got to pretend that Donald Trump didn't deliver lower inflation, which of course he did. And then you've simultaneously got to defend Kamala Harris's atrocious economic record, which has made gas, groceries, and housing unaffordable for American citizens. I was raised by a woman who would sometimes go into medical debt so that she could put food on the table in our household. I know what it's like to not be able to afford the things that you need to afford. We can do so much better. To all of you watching, we can get back to an America that's affordable again. I mean, Walls, I don't know what he's doing on that split screen right there. I mean, Walls looks like, you know, kind of weirdly like a, um, a, a ferret who has popped his head up out of the ground. He's just kind of like swiveling his head around wildly. It was not a good night for Tim Walls. Even Democrats were acknowledging last night it was not a good night for Tim Walls. The worst moment of the night for Tim Walls was when he was asked about the fact that he had suggested that he was in Hong Kong during the Tiananmen Square massacre. This went about as poorly for Tim Walls as it's possible for things to go in a presidential debate. My commitment has been from the beginning to make sure that I'm there for the people, to make sure that I get this right. I will say more than anything, many times I, uh, I will talk a lot. I will get caught up in the rhetoric. Um, but being there, the impact it made, the difference it made in my life, I learned a lot about China. I hear the critiques of this. I would make the case that Donald Trump should have come on one of those trips with us. I guarantee you he wouldn't be uh, praising Xi Jinping about COVID. And I guarantee you he wouldn't start a trade war that he ends up losing. So this is about trying to understand the world. It's about trying to do the best you can for your community. And then it's putting yourself out there and letting your folks understand what it is. My commitment, whether it be through teaching, which I was good at, or whether it was being a good soldier or was being a good member of Congress, those are the things that I think are the values that people care about. Governor, just to follow up on that, th the question was, can you explain the no, discrepancy? Just, all I said on this was, is I got there that summer and misspoke on this. So I, I will just, that's what I've said. So I was in oh boy. Hong Kong and China during the democracy protest went in. Um, um, oh, boy. At that point, you, you might have to stop talking. I, I love when people feel the necessity to talk. At this point, by the way, during, during the debate, he did call himself a knucklehead, which was a, which was a move. You, know, you don't see it very often. It's a bold move, Cotton. We'll see how it works out for him. Now, we'll get to more of this in a moment. First, Every year when Apple releases the new iPhone, the big carriers play the same old game. Sign your life away for the next two years. Get a free iPhone. Don't fall for it. With Pure Talk, you can get great savings on the new iPhone 16, and you can still get an affordable data plan that fits your needs on America's most dependable 5G network. How would I know? Well, because I do have the new iPhone 16 from Pure Talk. Bottom line, stop falling into the same traps and overpaying for data you're not going to use. Listen to this. With Pure Talk, for just 35 bucks a month, get a limited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, plus mobile hotspot on America's most dependable 5G network. And here's the best part. When you switch your cell phone service to Pure Talk on a qualifying plan, you'll get one year free of Daily Wire Plus Insider. That's access to the full library of DW Plus movies, series, and documentaries, including Lady Ballers, What is a Woman, Mr. Bertram, Run, Hide, Fight, plus uncensored ad-free daily shows like this one, one year free of our kids' platform, Benkey, and your very own free Leftist Tears Tumblr. But the only way you can actually get that special offer, you have to head on over to Pure Talk, dot com slash Shapiro or call and mention my name right now. Stop overpaying for your cell phone plan. Go to puretalk.com slash Shapiro today. Switch to a qualifying plan. Get one year free of Daily Wire plus Insider. One of my big sort of critiques overall of the moment in which we stand is that there is no one left who talks about small government like at all. So one of the questions was about the child care crisis. The crisis. OK, I, I tend to reserve the, the term crisis for things like, I don't know, war, perhaps a hurricane. I don't tend to think that the lack of affordable childcare amounts to a crisis. It amounts to a problem, obviously. I think that there are people who need childcare who can't afford it, and that's a problem. And it's usually handled and should be handled by family, by locality, at best, by state authorities. But this idea that it's up to the federal government to intervene with billions of dollars 
because there needs to be some place for, for two-year-olds to go while, while mom is working. Yeah, again, I, I don't see why that is a federal issue or where the federal government is empowered by the Constitution of the United States to get involved in that issue. But the Republican Party of the, the sort of Trump movement, and, and again, this actually precedes Donald Trump. I don't want to blame Trump for that. George W. Bush was doing this stuff with compassion and conservatism in the year 2000. So it's been around for a long time. There has not been a small government party in the United States for pretty much my entire lifetime. Ronald Reagan left office in 1989. So here was J.D. Vance talking about the necessity for federal involvement in child care, which, again, not into it. A number of my Republican colleagues and some Democrats, too, have worked on this issue. And I think there is a bipartisan solution here because a lot of us care about this issue. I mean, look, I, 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 I speak from this very personally because I'm married to a beautiful woman who is an incredible mother to our three beautiful kids, but is also a very, very brilliant corporate litigator. And I'm so proud of her. But being a working mom, even for somebody with all of the advantages of my wife, is extraordinarily difficult. And it's not just difficult from a policy perspective. She actually had access to paid family leave because she worked for a bigger company. But the cultural pressure on young families and especially young women, uh, I think makes it really hard for people to choose the family model they want. A lot of young women would like to go back to work immediately. Some would like to spend a little time home with the kids. Some would like to spend longer at home with the kids. We should have a family care model that makes choice possible. Okay, I mean, all of that may be true on a social level, but at no point in this debate did anybody just say, hey, free markets. Both of them agreed on tariffs. Both of them agreed on major government involvement in, in manufacturing subsidies. Both of them agreed on gigantic government involvement in everything from healthcare to childcare. A party that, that actually represents, you know, like a small federal government, because by the way, you want a corrupt federal government, make it big. You want an effective federal government, make it small. But that, that argument seems to have passed by the wayside. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. <laughs> 